what does your work aim to say about you or about the world we live in? Um, well, in, in the last, again, in the project we were discussing earlier, our stories of migration, I actually ask a question to anybody who interacts with the piece and it's called, what does it mean to be a global citizen? And what does that mean to, again, now that we're, we're in a very interconnected time, um, you can bury your head in the sand and pretend that that's not the case. Um, and you can, we can all certainly, um, I think part of being a global citizen also means, uh, in, in my mind, also like telling, making sure that I know where I'm from and like, in some ways it like cements like my desire to um, talk about my personal history when in the face of sort of like a global interconnected world. But I, I do like to, to ask questions like, um, in the, I'm working on a vessel series right now, which is uh, all of these different, you know, they're kind of based on the Hydria. Um, the Hydrias were something that, that were uh, filled with water oftentimes in like Roman cities. You would walk down the street and there'd be like a large vessel where you could, a, a thirsty traveler could like refresh themselves with some water. Um, but they were also used for voting. For instance, if you, if there was a, uh, a vote for a particular position, um, a vessel might be placed out in the center square and people would place their ballots in the votes inside of the vessels. So this sort of, um, they were also used for like oil, for, for hair, for beauty, for funeral, funerary kind of ashes. I mean, there's so many uses for vessels. So I've been creating this sort of like ongoing series of watercolor vessels that started during the lockdown and began as sort of like this desire to, first of all, I was having so many kind of emotions and so much stuff coming up for myself that I almost needed like a place to put that kind of energy, you know? And so um, I've been making this series of vessels, but with the hope that I can eventually open it up and make it like a workshop-based thing where I invite people to come and paint a vessel and say, you know, this vessel contains and ask people what it contains for them. So does it contain, you know, your fear? Does it contain your hope for the future? Does it contain, what does it contain? And so um, I think that, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I just, I think that that a lot of the, the, the work that I'm doing is always trying to connect with other humans and other people. And, and so it does somewhat tell my, you know, tell my story, but I really just like to have conversations, individual conversations with people. And um, I'm always trying to like come up with excuses to sit down with people and just like talk and like find out what's happening. And um, so I'm hoping this vessel project also becomes that. You're the bridge to talk to. That's so mm -hmm. sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my last question for you is, um, who are the artists that influence your work or your process of creating work? Um, I have an amazing, I have to say, I feel so lucky and blessed to have um, the incredible artist friend network that I do have. Um, so I've been doing, ever since the lockdown, I have a, a weekly crit group. It's almost every week. We've kind of slowed down since September because classes started and things like that. But over the summer, it was every single week and it was such a lifesaver. Um, so I was working with um, Saya Wolfalk, who is also a very dear friend of mine, uh, Kira Nam Green and Valerie Hegarty, and like all, you know, that little group we were meeting, you know, just like having their voices and being able to talk about our work and whatever is happening in our lives has been super crucial to um, just feeling feeling good and excited. Um, I also have another very dear friend, Chloe Bass, who is just absolutely inspiring to me and explores all levels of intimacy. And I think a lot of that has to do with also my education practice and my art practice. Like, I just feel like I, I look to Chloe for a lot of wisdom. And um, 
I don't know, there's just so many, like my other friend, uh, Nancy Amanka is a performance artist and a mother. And the two of us have shared so much um, about, you know, our own processes of, you know, caring for another human and, and our practice and what that means. And, um, and, a, and, a, and so another friend of mine, Wanda Gala as well. So it's like, who's a performance artist and a choreographer and dancer. So it's like, I think I have like a group of fr pretty much all women friends <laughs> who are amazing <laughs> and um, deeply inspiring to me. And I think we all really like uphold each other and care for one another um, in a way that like you just can't you just can't make that up it's really it's really important to a practice did you so meet them, oh sorry did you meet them um like through school or like through other residencies and do you yeah oh that's a great question actually um so i have met a lot of my friends through um either like like saya and valerie and kira i met them all through the elizabeth foundation for the arts which is a residency program where I work, but I also have a studio there. So I have met, um, and then I met Chloe and my friend Sally Swed, who is incredible and works at iBeam and previously was working at Creative Time. And um, I'm is a curator and I met, you know, her through California College of the Arts. And then I met Chloe through Sally. So it's like, you know, I think that really um, as an artist who, obviously values autonomy. I do think that working with institutions is a valuable thing because you get to meet people in a and and find your your people, your person group, your support group for the rest of your life. And so I, you know, through RISD and through um, CCA and through EFA, those have probably been the most influential institutions and um, places where I've like met my best friends. So it's valuable for that. I think that's incredibly wholesome um, that you guys provide support for one another and to expand your work together. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is like, you know, school only prepares you for like step one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk to you about what happened. Like, how do you have a family and how do you work and how do you live? And like how it's, there's so many unanswered questions. So I've had to answer those questions through artist collectives. I'm also part of a, an artist collective called admin where I work with other arts administrators and educators and artists and residency builders and creative people. And, you know, we address issues of like being both creatives and, you know, people who support creative networks or uh, support other artists. So, you know, there's, there's so much to it, like, you know, connecting with academia as well, like teaching at City College. I'm like so networked into all these different groups of things. And, and I think that the only way I've been able to survive uh, without, you know, billions of dollars <laughs> and <laughs> external support is really through like, you know, these, these um, sort of rhizomatic networks of uh, supportive people who, you know, just in, and allow me to like make my work and, and be, and be happy, and be supported. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to sit down and answer my questions. Um, yeah, no problem, Chelsea.